guys. In today's video, I wanted to talk sort of in detail about fitting the garments that you sew. I hear from you guys all the time about how that is the thing that you struggle with the most. And honestly, it makes perfect sense. It's the thing that's hardest to understand and also the hardest to achieve because our bodies are constantly changing and we're constantly learning new things about our bodies, so on and so forth. So today I have five tips for you, plus maybe a bonus one if you stick around to the end, on how to sew clothes that fit. If you're new here, I'm Lindsay. Hello and welcome. I am so glad that you found me. Please introduce yourself in the comments section below so that I can give you a formal welcome. All right, so jumping right into it, our first tip is all about measurements and specifically where to take your measurements. Everything that you sew starts off with bust, waist, and hip measurements, right? Those are the three basic measurements that you need to, before you even go to pick the size of the pattern that you are going to buy. And knowing where to take those measurements is what is going to get you as accurate of a measurement to compare to that body chart, right? So I'm gonna bring in my trusty little ditto form here today. Let me raise her up so that you guys can properly see all of the areas of the body. Okay. So the first measurement that we are gonna take is our bust measurement. You may need to take a high bust measurement and a full bust measurement, depending on what kind of garment you're making and what the pattern designer is asking of you in terms of how to figure out your bust measurement. Your full bust measurement is where this black tape is right here. It is literally across the fullest part of your bust. So right where your nipples are is where your full bust measurement is. You wanna keep your measuring tape nice and flat, um, which is why it might be helpful to get someone to help you. But that is your full bust measurement. Your high bust measurement goes deep up into your armpits and actually measures the top of your bust. And figuring out the difference between those two is gonna get your sewing bust cup size, which spoiler alert, is different than your bra cup size. Okay, so for all of you out there who have been going to get fitted at Victoria's Secret for years and years and are getting like double D bras that fit, when you go to take your sewing bust measurement, the fullness up between here and here is very different than what's between here and here, right? So this could be, if you carry a lot of tissue underneath your breast, you could have a larger bra size than your sewing cup size. So don't just assume if I'm a double D in bras that I'm a double D in sewing. That's not always true. Um, okay, the next measurement you're gonna need is your waist measurement. And a lot of people, for whatever reason, want to take their waist measurement at their belly buttons. But no, that is not correct. My belly button is here, as you can see. And my waist is this black ribbon here. It is the smallest part of your body. As you can see, my body curves in right here. This is the smaller part. A little tricky way for you to find that, a little uh, sneaky, tricky way for you to find that is to stand up perfectly straight, bend over, and where your body is like folding in on itself is your waist. It's gonna be very close to your ribs maybe even above a couple of your ribs, higher, much higher than you probably imagine. So this is your waist measurement. If you come down here, you can see my hip, my hip bones are right here. This would be our high hip measurement. So if you need that, this is where we're going for the high hip measurement right at your hip bones, which means that your actual full hip measurement is not at your hip bones. It is a lot lower than what you would imagine. And on me, I am, <laughs> hey girl, hey. Um, this is my hip measurement where this black ribbon is down at the bottom. So it is the fullest part of your bum. So you can see this is my side profile and the fullest part of my bum is right where that black ribbon is. So that is where your hip measurement is. And again, you want it to be parallel to the ground and taken all the way around. It's gonna be closer to your pelvic bone, um, or I mean, maybe not mine is obviously, but if you have like a lower bum that sits lower, if you have a flatter bum, you know, you may have some fluctuation in terms of 
um, how high or low your hip measurement is on your like hip area. So that's the first thing, knowing where to take your measurements. Thank you, Ditto Form, for doing your service today. <laughs> the next tip I have for you is to source patterns that are intended to help you with fit. Yes, you can buy a thousand different basic tank tops and try and work on each one to find the one that fits you the best just out of the envelope. Or you can buy a pattern uh, that is that includes in the instructions how to help you fit that garment. Two that I can think of um, that are really focused on the concept of fit are in the big four category, Palmer Plush. Um, they have their own tissue fitting method, which is going to help you sort of like fit the tissue on your body before you're cutting any fabric, before you're even making a muslin. And then they also have different lines on drawn right on their pattern pieces for if you need a full bust adjustment, if you need a small bust adjustment, if you need a full seat adjustment, a belly adjustment, whatever it is, they have all the lines on there and walk you through how to make the adjustments on their pattern pieces, depending on how the tissue is fitting your body. In the indie category, we have Jennifer Stern, J Stern Designs. In her patterns, I actually have one here. This is her Easy Fit and Sew Yoga Pants pattern. So you can see it's a basic knit fitted yoga pant and included in this instruction booklet toward the end are it's almost like a workbook you get this little worksheet right that looks something like this where you're encouraged to figure out the stretch of your fabric write all of that down take some measurements of these different areas of your body, compare them to the pattern, and then make the adjustments accordingly. And you're wondering, how do I do that? Well, she has instructions in the booklet specifically for pattern adjustments that relate to this specific pattern. So we're talking about increasing the rise in the front and or back. We're talking about lowering the rise if you need to do that. We have in here, um, if you have like a defined waistline or a sway back or your waist is much smaller than your hips, how to adjust for that. And then the final one here is how to adjust the width of the leg. So she goes in great detail about all the different areas of a yoga pant that might need adjusting. She tells you when to make adjustments, some adjustments that you shouldn't make, like for example, in these leggings specifically, she's like, don't alter them to make them a wide leg. The grain line will be off. It won't work. You'll be frustrated. Just don't even bother with it, which is helpful because how would I know that, right? I'm not, I'm no expert, but she is. And she includes all of this in all of her patterns. She has a ton of great patterns, basic tees and tanks and tops. She's got pants and skirts. So you could really do kind of like a capsule wardrobe, all in basics that fit perfectly, that you could almost use as sort of sloper-ish um, in comparing different elements to some of the other patterns that you wanna make. So finding patterns that focus on fit is tip number two. Tip number three is to really learn how to choose your size. So picking your size in a sewing pattern is one of those things that people just get really frustrated with. And I get it. You look at the body chart and you're one size and then you make it and you're drowning. And you're like, I don't understand like what happened here. And I think that there's a bit of a disconnect between the sewing pattern companies wanting you to be successful with your garment, getting a completed garment that's not too small and erring on the side of caution and maybe making them a little bit too big. Um, and so then often a lot of people are like, well, I just automatically size down and all the patterns that I ever make. And that's not necessarily the answer either. The way to fully understand it is to consider pattern ease. And that includes design ease, like the ease that the designer has included, like in this dress, for example, design ease would be all of this width in the waist and the hip. That's design ease. Wearing ease is different than that. It is the ease that you need in a garment in order for it to be wearable and comfortable. I'm talking about like, you know, movement in the shoulder, in your sleeve cap, even this band here that's pretty fitted. 
you know, you have to have some ease in this. It can't be exactly your body measurements or else you're like, ah, I can't move. So understanding those two concepts, understanding what the terms fitted, uh, semi-fitted, uh, very loose fitting, and, and understanding what those terms actually mean in terms of inches, and then comparing that to what you want out of your garment. If you want a very loose fitting garment, this is gonna be good for you. If you want a fitted garment, you're gonna put this on and be like, no, this is a potato sack. This is not what I wanted at all. And it's all about comparing that pattern ease. I cover all of this and more in my fast fit worksheet. Um, you can get it on my website. There's a link in the description box here. It's basically a worksheet that walks you through the math metal, mathematical equation that I use to determine the pattern's ease and then comparing that against what I want out of the garment. I have a full video tutorial um, that comes with the worksheet that allows you to um, see how I use the worksheet in real time, in, in a real practice using a real pattern and how I kind of analyze the pattern's ease against my measurements and kind of what I want out of that pattern. Tip number four is to take advantage of the resources that are available to you. So many of them are free and if they're not free and they're paid, they're paid for a reason because the person behind them is a bona fide expert and they will cut the time that you are going to spend trying to figure this out on your own by way more than half, by a lot. Um, because they can just look at you and tell you exactly pinpoint what is going on. So after you, let's say after you've um, done your fast fit worksheet, you know, you're like, okay, I'm going to make this size. Then you make your muslin in that size and you're looking at it and you're like, I think this is good, but I see a wrinkle here. I see a pull there. This doesn't feel super comfortable. Something's off. Where do you go from there? My suggestion going back again, Jennifer Stern, the expert in fitting that I can rely on to provide new fresh content and learn from week after week. She's doing these videos on YouTube, she has a YouTube channel, um, Fit Tip Tuesday. Every single Tuesday she posts a video on YouTube with some kind of fit tip. So you can imagine over the years that she's been doing it, she has amassed a large library of fit tips. She's a great teacher. She makes it all very approachable and very easy to understand. Once you kind of digest what she's got going on there in terms of free resources, you can join her Facebook group. And in the Facebook group, she does a Fab Fit Friday, like a live Facebook, what are they, what are they Facebook Live, um, where she will discuss with you in real time different fitting issues. Super fun. She also does Zoom classes um, that will help you fit one of her patterns. And then if you need to break off and do a private fitting session with her, you can do that. She's just going to make fitting for you so much more approachable and also just going to make fitting in general much more approachable and kind of take away the guesswork of what this fold means or what that fold means and she's just going to you know really make it simple in the grand scheme of things and then if you need the personal one-on-one -on -one help she's there for you to do that as well I th she's just an incredible incredible resource and um i would not be where i am in terms of fitting without her so i hope you guys will all go check out at least her youtube channel join her facebook group follow her on instagram she's got a lot of information kind of floating all around the internet um, you just have to study fitting, you know, you have to study fitting the same way that you studied how to thread your sewing machine, how to, you know, do a zigzag stitch. It's the same thing. It's the same thing, except it's with our bodies, right? Um, and so that brings me to tip number five. Tip number five is probably the hardest one to do in practice because we are eager beavers and we want to just get to the good parts. I get that. You don't want to sit here and have to analyze the garment. And I say analyze the garment and not your body specifically. We're not analyzing our bodies here. Our bodies are what they are, beautiful and gorgeous in every single form that they can take. 
the garment and how it fits our body is what we're analyzing. That is going to change the way you look at fitting also. If you're constantly looking in the mirror after you sew something and go, oh, this doesn't fit because my thigh is so big. This doesn't fit because my belly's so fat. This doesn't fit because of this thing about my body or that thing about my body. That way of thinking, you're never going to achieve the fit that you want because you're constantly blaming it on your body. If your clothes fit, it is going to camouflage anything that might be going on with your body. That's just how it is. So we have to be really kind to ourselves. We have to, you know, make those wearable muslins. Um, that's not the fun part, but at least we can make them somewhat wearable, right? Um, in a fabric that we may like a little bit, not our favorite, but we may like a little bit um, that will help us kind of analyze for fit that we can still wear around the house and still enjoy the time that we spent sewing that muslin rather than making it out of true muslin and then having to just like toss it at the end of the day. Nobody likes doing that. At least with a wearable muslin, you know, you can still wear it around the house. Maybe the fit is close enough that you can wear it out of the house. You know, you're just making a few tweaks on your final version. But yeah, making that wearable muslin and then practice, 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 study, study, study are my best tips. If you guys are watching my first impression Friday videos, I do try to call out fit issues as I see them. Um, when I see wrinkles and pulls and, you know, anything like that, I'm trying to call out that that exists and how you might go about checking for that if you go to make that pattern. So being able to see it with your eyes, analyze it, and then utilizing the resources like my fast fit worksheet, like Jennifer Stern's vast catalog of um, tutorials and resources that she has available to you um, and getting those patterns that are going to specifically talk about fitting that pattern as well are all going to send you on the right trajectory. You're not going to make a couture gown that fits perfectly in your first few months of sewing. It's just not going to happen. Heck, it might even happen in your first five years of sewing. If you're not studying fit, you have to start with the basics. You have to start with the simple concepts and then build from there. So I hope that this video was able to encourage you guys to look at fitting a little bit more open-mindedly, a little bit more positively, like it, it can be accomplished. It's a little bit like Nirvana where we're constantly reaching for it and we may never actually get there. But so long as you are practicing and studying and trying, you are gonna get so close, so, so very close that it'll feel like we've done it. <laughs> um, let me know if you have any other fitting questions, if you have any fitting tips that you want to add to this list. Leave those in the comment section below. If I get enough of them, I'll do a part two. I mean, why not? Um, but that is going to do it for me today, y'all. All the links for everything that you could possibly need that I talked about in this video are linked in the description box. So be sure to check that out. Um, otherwise, yeah, that's it for me today. Thank y'all so much for watching. See you soon. Bye.